Benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH. Causes and mechanism. Diagnosis. Treatment. Causes and mechanism. Incidence. Causes. Mechanism. Incidence. As men age, there is some degree of enlargement of the prostate gland. Although benign prostatic hyperplasia is considered a disease of the elderly men, 10% of men as young as 25 to 30 years of age will have enlargement of the prostate. This increases to 50% by age 60 and to 90% by age 85. Causes of benign prostatic hyperplasia. There are no known causes for BPH. However, it is thought to be under the control of hormones. The Western lifestyle also is suspected to contribute because the disease is very rare in the Orient and Africa. Smoking, alcohol consumption, race, obesity, vasectomy, and sexual activity appear to be unrelated to the problem. There is a familial tendency which may account for those cases with onset at a younger age. Mechanism of benign prostatic hyperplasia. As early as the 40s, nodules begin to develop in the transition zone of the prostate. These enlarge to form the main mass of the enlarged prostate. In addition, there is also a diffuse enlargement of the transition zone. The prostate gland surrounds the urethra. As it enlarges, it reduces the caliber of the urethra so that urine flow from the bladder is obstructed and leads to the urinary symptoms that men develop as they age. The exact size of the prostate enlargement and the symptoms this causes are highly variable between men. The AUA symptom score sheet gives a general idea of how severe a man's symptoms are. Diagnosis of benign prostatic hyperplasia. The most common symptoms of BPH are a slowly progressing decrease in the force of urination. Usually, initiating voiding takes more time. At the end of voiding, dribbling of urine occurs. Often, double voiding is present. The patient realizes he is not completely emptying his bladder and that he takes a long time to void. Most men begin awakening at night to urinate one to six times. There is no pain on urination. Eventually, some men will not be able to urinate at all and develop urinary retention requiring emergency catheterization. BPH is diagnosed by either digital rectal examination or transrectal ultrasonography. Biopsy is not necessary. The symptoms dictate whether treatment is needed. Before treatment is started, however, it is important to make sure prostatic cancer is not present. The digital rectal examination in BPH reveals a soft, swollen prostate. No nodules, hard spots, or tenderness are present. Diagnosis. AUA symptom score. Euroflow. Cystoscopy. AUA symptom score. The AUA symptom score index is used to grade how severe a man's BPH symptoms are. The next screen will allow you to calculate the AUA symptom score and allow you to assess the severity of the symptoms. Click the possible answers to the questions on the left. The score and the symptoms will be displayed at the bottom of the screen. AUA Symptom Score. AUA Symptom Score Index. Question. Over the past month or so, how often have you had the sensation of not emptying your bladder completely after you finished urinating? Over the past month or so, how often have you had to urinate again in less than two hours after you finished urinating? 
Over the past month or so, how often have you found that you have stopped and started again several times when you urinated? Over the past month or so, how often have you found it difficult to postpone urination? Over the past month or so, how often have you had a weak urinary stream? Over the past month or so, how often have you had to push or strain to begin urination? Over the last month, how many times did you most typically get up to urinate from the time you went to bed at night until the time you got up in the morning? Possible answers. Zero. Not at all. One. Less than one time in five. Two. Less than half the time. Three. About half the time. Four. More than half the time. Five. Almost always. Symptom score. Some of the answers. Zero through seven. Mild prostatism. Eight through 18. Moderate prostatism. 19 through 35. Severe prostatism. Euroflow. A Euroflow is basically an electric toilet that measures how fast urination is occurring. Normal men should be able to avoid a peak of at least equal to one tablespoonful per second and to average greater than two teaspoonfuls per second for the whole urination. Cystoscopy. The urologist may directly look on the inside of the prostate gland with a procedure called cystoscopy. A lighted instrument is inserted up the urethra and lenses are used to directly visualize the prostate gland and bladder to determine if obstruction is present. The procedure is usually done with local anesthetics only. No preparation is necessary before a cystoscopy and the patient may resume normal activities immediately afterwards. Treatment. Surgical treatment. Drug therapy. Surgical treatment. Transurethral resection of prostate. T-U-R-P. Other surgical treatments. Transurethral resection of prostate. Methods. Follow-up. Complications. Method. The patient is placed under spinal or general anesthesia. A lighted instrument is passed up the urethra to the prostate gland. The urologist guides a small wire loop with electrical current running through it. The loop reaches out and cuts small pieces out of the inside of the prostate. This opens the urinary channel so that a freer voiding can occur. A catheter is usually left in for one to two days. Follow-up. The patient must be careful not to injure the raw area. Method. The patient is placed under... Follow-up. The patient must be careful not to injure the raw area inside his prostate gland for three weeks. This means that bowel movements must be soft. Bicycle riding, heavy lifting, and long distance driving are not allowed. The patient should also not take aspirin because of the bleeding tendency. The scraped out area heals over two to three months. 
sometimes bleeding can occur from this raw area for the first three weeks or so. Complications. Bleeding is the major complication of TURP. After a TURP, the urine stream will spray and the patient may have some episodes of incontinence. Later, this usually clears up. Most, but not all, patients do not experience problems with erections after a TURP. For all patients, though, ejaculation will not produce any more semen. The patient is, therefore, sterile. Other surgical treatments. Transurethral incision of the prostate, TUIP. Transurethral incision of the prostate is merely a single incision through the bladder neck and prostate. There is much less bleeding than with a TURP, and it probably causes less retrograde ejaculation. TUIP can usually be done as an outpatient. It is not as effective in relieving symptoms as a TURP. A disadvantage is that no tissue is examined by the pathologist and cancer of the prostate may be missed. Laser TURP. Several kinds of lasers can be used to perform a TURP. Some lasers actually vaporize the prostate tissue. Other lasers merely kill the prostatic tissue and the dead material is slowly urinated out over a period of time. These have the advantage of producing less bleeding than a standard TURP. The disadvantage of laser TURP is that no tissue is examined by the pathologist, so prostate cancer may be missed. The procedure also takes longer than a TURP. Vapotrude TURP. This is a TURP done with electricity that actually vaporizes the prostate tissue. The advantage is less bleeding. The disadvantage is that no tissue is removed for the pathologist to examine. There is a risk that prostatic cancer may be missed. Open prostatectomy. Sometimes a prostate gland is so large that it cannot be removed piecemeal through the urethra as in a TURP. To do so would require too much anesthesia, time, and too much blood loss. An open prostatectomy requires a surgical incision and a hospital stay of three to five days. There are three different surgical approaches that can be used. Retropubic, suprapubic, and perineal. This is not the same as a radical prostatectomy, which is done for cancer. The open prostatectomy leaves some of the prostate gland behind, and cancer can later develop. Prosthetic stents. In patients who are too sick to undergo a TURP, prosthetic stents can be employed. These look like a steel spring, and they hold the prostate open for urination. They are best employed in patients with a short life expectancy. Transurethral needle ablation of the prostate, T-U-N-A. Transurethral needle ablation of the prostate is also an experimental outpatient treatment for BPH. Needles are placed in the prostate gland and an electrical current is passed through the gland. This electricity basically kills portions of the prostate gland. No hospitalization or anesthesia is required. Microwave hyperthermia. This is an experimental treatment for BPH. The patient sits comfortably in a chair during treatments. A warming catheter is placed in the urethra and microwaves are used to gently kill parts of the prostate gland. Multiple treatments are required. Foley catheter. 
In patients who are very ill or are incontinent of urine, a catheter can be permanently placed in the bladder. This rubber tube constantly drains off the urine into a bag. If the catheter is placed through the penis, it is called a Foley or urethral catheter. If it is placed through the abdominal wall into the bladder, it is called a suprapubic tube. The tube needs to be changed every four to eight weeks because stones and encrustations form on the rubber tube. Intermittent catheterization. For men with urinary retention or great difficulty voiding, an option is to catheterize the patient four times per day and drain off the urine, but to not leave the catheter in place. This intermittent catheterization must be kept up until a permanent definitive treatment is provided. The catheters must be kept clean, but not sterile. Periodically, the patient may develop urinary tract infections on this program. Drug therapy. Alpha blockers. Reductase inhibitors. LHRH analogs. Alpha adrenergic blockers. Alpha adrenergic blockers are used to relieve symptoms of BPH. The drugs relax tone of the prostate muscle, allowing a freer urination. Stopping the drugs immediately allows the symptoms to return. These are best for mild to moderate BPH. The National Institutes of Health has just begun a very large experimental trial in men to determine over the next seven years whether taking these medicines might actually prevent the progression of BPH. Alpha adrenergic blockers that are commonly used are terazosin, hytrin, doxazosin, cardura, and prazosin, minipress. These medicines are also used to lower blood pressure. A common side effect is lightheadedness. Reductase inhibitors. Reductase inhibitors block the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. The gland tends to slowly shrink in size by about 30%. Sometimes this translates into a slow improvement in the man's voiding symptoms. The improvement may not be fully seen for six months. Severe voiding symptoms are not improved as well as more minor symptoms. The drug that is commonly used is finasteride, Proscar. Finasteride is usually given at a dose of 5 milligrams per day. Finasteride, Proscar, will cause the PSA to fall. This reduces the ability of the physician to follow PSA as a marker of prostate cancer. Finasteride is relatively well tolerated. Side effects are uncommon and include impotence, breast tenderness and enlargement, lip swelling, and skin rash. LHRH analogs. The LHRH analogs are noted to decrease the size of the prostate gland. The drugs must be continued indefinitely and the associated cost, the need to give as an injection and side effects such as impotence, prevent the usage of these drugs as therapy for BPH. LHRH analogs include Luprolide, Lupron, and Gosarelin, Zolidex. Prostatitis. Prostatitis is an inflammation of the prostate gland that causes a totally different set of symptoms from BPH or prostate cancer causes and mechanism. Diagnosis of prostatitis. Treatment of prostatitis. Causes and mechanism. Incidence. Causes. Natural history. Incidence. Prostatitis is very common in young adults and middle-aged males. 
Though no accurate numbers are available, as many as 10 to 20 percent of males may suffer this condition at some point. Causes. The inciting cause for most cases of prostatitis is an infection which reaches the prostate gland via the urethra. The infecting agents may be a bacteria or viruses. Often the organism cannot be identified. The prostatitis symptoms and inflammation of the prostate gland may sometimes continue beyond the period of acute infection. The process is then termed chronic prostatitis. Natural history. In acute prostatitis, an infecting organism reaches the prostate gland via the urethra. This most often occurs during sexual intercourse. The organism may be a bacterium or it may be a virus, but the most common is probably the organism chlamydia. The area of the prosthetic urethra and the prosthetic gland ducts once infected become acutely inflamed and swollen. Other than the symptoms, there are no long-term sequelae from prostatitis. It does not appear to lead to either benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH, or prostate cancer. The inflammatory process may descend down to the vas deferens to the testicles, giving the patient pain in the testicles. Diagnosis of prostatitis. Signs and symptoms. Examination. Signs and symptoms. The patient first notices a burning sensation on urination and a decreased force in his urinary stream. Often the irritation leads to frequent urination, though awakening at night is not unusual. There is a pain at the tip of the penis and also in the perineum under the scrotum. As the inflammatory process becomes more chronic, patients have dull, low back pain and rectal pain. Pain on ejaculation is often reported as is a sense of restriction of the ejaculate. When the process descends down the vas deferens to the testicles, the patient develops epididymitis. Physical examination. The digital rectal examination reveals a prostate gland that is spongy or boggy. When the prostate gland is massaged with the examining finger, the patient experiences pain, a need to urgently urinate, and usually develops intense perspiration. After the prosthetic massage, white prosthetic fluid will drip out of the penis. Treatment of prostatitis. Examination of this fluid under the microscope shows many white blood cells indicative of the infection and inflammation. Sometimes the bacteria can also be seen under the microscope. The testicles will be tender along the vas deferens and at the upper and lower poles if epididymitis is also present. Treatment of prostatitis. 